Right, so um, this is the first video. Um, well, no, this is the second one. We recorded Squad Blueken. You guys have to find out about Squad Blueken, and we'll give you all, all the updates about that. So this video was sent to us by another YouTube channel, uh, the Dungeon Delver, and I'll link to him down below. He's a grognard, and I've got a bit of a soft spot for grognards. And Megan opened this up, right? And we've got really horrible internet, and Megan's actually got the internet, like, USB thing. At the minute, we have to share the internet on the computers, by the way, guys. It's really janky. <laughs> it's really janky. And the internet's stuck. And, and uh, Megan opened it up, and she looked at some of the names, and she was like, are you telling me I have to look up how to, sp how to, how to read these names? No, but you see, the thing is, I'm not going to look it up, because I'm making his story. I'm making it up as I go along. <laughs> the names will be pronounced how I pronounce them, <laughs> okay. my guy. All right, okay. okay, okay. So, look, sorry, Mom. He's um, going to he's gonna cringe, <laughs> but look, 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 look. No, 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 no. You send things to Nick Beardia to read? I'm reading them. <laughs> Me. Me. Look at me. me. I am the reader now. I am the reader. Look at me. I am dyslexic. <laughs> <laughs> so look, guys, the thing is, as well, like we've already, like, so I can't even look it up for, and uh, honestly, like, so I can't been, even look up these names. Look, okay, all I'm trying to say is, uh, I've been trying to use Twitter an awful lot, and I'm sorry, I've found some new grognard friends on the internet. Okay. Can we not be nice? Can we not you're a grognard. Well, I'm a young grognard, okay? Can I, can I not? Debatable. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Look, let's just, let's just jump into this. Also, we were supposed to do this for Christmas Day. Our lives are absolutely chaotic, chaotic like to say the least. Pure least. chaos. Um, it's absolutely bad to them. So yeah, you're getting a Christmas story a couple of days after Boxing Day. I'm sorry about that, guys. Like, let's just jump into it. Let, you, you guys will enjoy this anyway. Right? Every year at Christmas... I have a special, out of campaign, one or two shot game. What? Yeah, so it's a one shot, but sometimes oh, right, it's okay. tier three. For my players, we've played online since 2012, and on Rule 20 since 2014. You poor soul. It's always been first edition advanced D&D, but that doesn't matter so much. See, Megan, I told you he was a grognard. Megan, he's got long white hair. That means he's like proper grognard. That means that's like... Is that the tier list? Is yeah, tier I, list? yeah, I don't have a grey long hair. You don't have hair? No, I will. No, I do have hair. I've got a full head of hair. Megan, I'm almost 30 and I've still got a full James head of hair. I'm just trying to grow a beard at the minute, everyone, by the way. Right, okay, just, like, just, keep, just keep going. We're hardly into this, all right? <laughs> when the holidays are near, the adventuring party finds himself drawn to an old inn, always near to the location. This is the Old Phoenix, a strange inn that the party has encountered before. The inn seems to move through time and space with only the innkeeper and his wife, who always recognise the party and remember visits from them that haven't taken place yet from the party's point of reference. The innkeeper is a human named Bob. His wife is a good demon. Good named... demon in quotations or in brackets. A, a good demon named Vicka. Now, Bob <coughs> and Vicka, keep names like that. Right, yeah, that we can work with that. I can work you, with Bob. You know, you know the reason why he use Bob and Vicka? Because he's using this in again and again. He's like, you know what? See all I mean, these... I can't remember uh, all these Bob, weird Bob. Bob. See, Pokemon did the right, had the right idea. Ash. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, what was it? What do you call the nurse? In Pokemon, oh, and the and the police one, they're yeah, all the they're same. All the same. <laughs> yeah, they, see, this is what this is what people need to do. DMs need to get over themselves <laughs> and just be like, you know what, guys, this is the inn, the inn. It doesn't matter where you go, this is the same inn across <laughs> all time and space. Okay, guys, <laughs> deal with it. Right, let's let's let's, let's meet. Let's, who's who's the party? Oh. <laughs> this is what Megan's going. Like. Okay. The party consists of Obred. Imbred, we're going to call him. No, Obred, a human cleric of... Falith. Fa <laughs> no, it's not Falith. Foltis. Very. Ascetic. <laughs> I feel like he's done this on purpose. Ascetic. You know the thing is... He's, he's, you know the thing is, so he, he watches us and he... You know fine like he's doing this on <sighs> I purpose. I want to say a swear word, but I can't. <laughs> he's doing this on purpose. Petra, a human fighter. Brand, a human cleric of hero of heroin. Words of my leg, guys. Let's just keep moving. Jaden, Jaden. Yeah, we'll call him Jaden. Jaden Smith. Jaden, a human druid. Etho, a human cleric slash magic user. Grindel, a dwarf fighter. Logan, a human ranger. Stephanie, a human magic user. Kane, a human thief. Interesting point. This player, Tracy, worked for TSR in the early days and is the creator of the Mind Flare Monster. Oh, that's really cool. You know, he actually told Please. me. He did tell me now. <clears throat> now I don't know if this is like Glognor or Dragon Lights, but he did say, you know, I, I, I know Guy, I, I knew Guy Gax, just saying. But I don't know if that's like. <clears throat> I don't know if that's like the new thing with like Glognards. 
You know what I mean? Because yeah. like they, they're like I know they're, you, mean. you know, it's that like you know, uh, just give me to them back in the day. You know, <laughs> it's hard to tell, but I'm going to assume probably yes. Yeah. Alindra, a half elf fighter slash magic user slash thief. Carolyn, a human paladin. Jean, a human NPC paladin, and Braun, a human NPC fighter. Right. So see this 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 guy. He knows how to name his NPCs. The party found the inn, and on recognising it, went inside. The hall was filled with song and merry-making in general. Only Oberid... <laughs> they have to put the second name in, man. <laughs> right, no, right, 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 let's do this proper. Let's do okay. this proper. Okay, right, right, okay. We're going to do this proper. Enough of this f***ing about business. Let's just go for this, right? right? Only Oberid stood aside, although he did allow Lauren to embrace him before she finished her duties for the evening. Who's Lauren? <laughs> Lauren's not there? Who's Lauren? <laughs> Megan, I said we were going to do this properly. Don't embarrass me in front of my new <laughs> Eventually the guests and customers departed or went to their rooms, leaving the party by the fireside. Jaden fed truffles a bag of these truffles Jaden <laughs> fed truffles. No truffles is the thing, it's like a bag oh truffles a bag. Yeah. Oh wait, Jean so it's a dog. Fed truffles it? a bag of her namesake and surreptitiously harvested I look, I read look, that. Megan, that's a little that's, that's a normal a word, word, surreptitiously. Surreptitiously harvested some of the abundant holly from the boys here and there throughout the inn. And dry would you, would you believe this so is how our channel became big was doing story times? How on earth was How did that we ball? get here? How did we actually get this far in life? <laughs> Right, proper. Let's do this proper. Enough of this. Enough. Come on. Let's do this. <laughs> Stephanie was still intrigued by the festooned trees. Festooned. Yeah, festooned like, trees. Festooned, like, oh yeah, because it's, like, it's like Christmas, you know what I mean? It's all done. Festooned, okay. like festive. Look, I'm calm on his sin, I don't know. As was Grindo. Although the dwarf is familiar with the place and its unusual magics, the tree still held a fascination for him. The rest of the company, sated and happy, relaxed to listen to the crackling fire. Braun presented Petra with a sprig of mistletoe. One of the other revellers had said that it was for kissing, and he was unsure if they should both eat it first, or what precisely. Wait, I I, I know where this is going, man. I've, I've, I've got enough ERP stories to know about this one. <laughs> Petra asked Jaden if they should, but the druid advised them against it. Lauren, the innkeeper's daughter, brought a letter that had been placed on the mantelpiece to Carolyn's room. It hadn't been there the night before, and the large wax seal on it was that of the company of the Phoenix. Soon the group met at the dining table in the common room of the inn, and as they all took their repast, Petra opened the letter. Sorry to bother you during the holidays, but I have a favour to ask of you again. It's an urgent matter. If you could meet me outside on the road near the inn, I'd greatly appreciate it. SC. Oh, Realising yeah. oh, they okay. had... Realising they had another quest to undertake, they readied themselves and departed the inn, which was, as they suspected, somewhere else. Continuing on through the snow, at a road crossing in a wood that the inn was now nearby, they met St. Claus, who asked that they help a nearby village that seemed to have been ravaged by some sort of beast. They took his direction and travelled through the woods, then, finding a small town of low cottage, all surrounded by a stone fence. Immediately they spied some signs of upset. In the centre of the village, they noticed it looked as though a great tree had been unearthed, dragged, or otherwise moved away, and a bakery not too far away had been demolished within. Other buildings in the middle of the town had been likewise damaged. Petra called out for the chieftain or head of the village. A stooped back old man, obviously once quite large and powerful, came forth out of the crowd. The party spoke with him, but he was clearly hard of hearing, as he shouted all of his replies. He stopped halfway through greeting them, and upon spying Grindel, grabbed a sack and tried to snatch the dwarf up, shouting, Oh, I've got you now, you wee hairy leprechaun! <laughs> I mean, that happens to me on a daily basis, so it's not going <laughs> to lie, like... It took Bran physically lifting the huge old man and carrying him away, as well as Petra shouting back at him that Grindel was in fact not a leprechaun to convince the chief otherwise. Just as well, Grindel used his gauntlets of climbing to haul himself safely up the side of the two-story building. His safety was temporary, as a good wife opened a shutter and began to beat the dwarf <laughs> about his head with a broom. Once the ruckus had died down, the chieftain called a young, thin man out and dragged him in front of the party. It was he, said the chief, who had caused this calamity. The young man stammered an explanation that, in the ruin of an abandoned cottage at the edge of the village, he found a book while foraging for mushroom. It was written in Latin, apparently, a language spoken here, that he had little understanding of, but he seemed to pertain to creating more food out of the little amounts. 
Wishing for the Christmas feast to be more plentiful, he read the instructions in the book, which he thought was a cook in the kitchen, and that was when the calamity happened. So, I don't know if you know this, but we've got a website with lots of models, and whenever I say lots of models, I mean lots of models. We've got models for any setting that you can think of, with humans with biddies, animals that shouldn't have biddies but do have biddies, dwarves and elves with biddies, look, we've got a lot of smut models, but it doesn't stop there, we really do have models for anything and everything, and to be honest, they look so good. Chef's kiss, so good. But it's not all smart for all you good Christian Minecraft server players. We've got you covered. And we even got the weebs covered too, which is unusual for this channel because we don't <laughs> like weebs. <laughs> yeah, the weebs aren't that bad. We, <laughs> also, just that bad. <laughs> we also have 5th edition subclasses and adventures, which some of them are free for download. And we sell a physical printed copy of Steel Water as well. And you can request a signed version, if that's your thing, where I'll draw a penis on it for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, hey, if you want you know, us to sign a couple of want, decks, that's we, what you we'll, want. We'll give you decks, okay, guys? That's that's what. Anyway, you want. if you enjoy what we do here, go ahead and check out the website. It helps us out so so much, and we don't need to worry about our YouTube overlords striking down another one of our channels. Our website is also now available as an app on Android. Also, and the winner of the daily giveaway is this guy. Yay! Woo! <laughs> Look, anyway, uh, in for a chance to win, all you gotta do is like, subscribe, leave a comment down below, automatically entered in. And to claim the prize, you just send an email to nickbeardycontact at gmail.com. Let's go back to the video. The goose he was preparing to slaughter and cook suddenly grew so large it burst through the walls and grew several heads. Then, cakes and other desserts leaped from the oven as if they were living beasts and rampaged through the ruins of the place, all heading towards the outskirts of the town, leaping over or knocking down the stone fence. Finally, the huge tree from the centre of the village had come to life, and it too had shambled out of the town, although it avoided damaging anything. Offering to help the villagers, the party then left the fall of the Goose Hydra. Logan was able to track its huge web feet, and they found it many miles away in a dismal bog, on the edge of a foggy pond. The beast saw them first and set up a terrible honking as it rushed forward. Swords, axes, javelins and spells were all brought to bear against the multi-headed goose. Jaden cast fairy fire to better target it and also loosed a sling stone at it. Etho levitated upwards and threw a spread of magic missiles at the creature. It pecked at the party with its coffin sized bills. It tried equally to wallop them with its huge wing. In the third round, Brand Grace Brand Grayson? Yeah, but yeah. Why yeah. is he putting in sign names? <laughs> why <laughs> you why you do this? Why are you, why are you confusing? In the third round though, Brand cast a powerful dispel magic on the creature, and it quickly shrank down and became an angry but much less dangerous normal sized goose. Collecting the file, the party returned to the town and left the bird with them, this time following the track of the other creatures into the highland overlooking the countryside. The strange footprints of the others awakened beings led in that direction. There they located a cave that seemed to be where the tracks ended. The odour of fruit, sugar and other spices hung in the air. They had found the lair of the dreaded <laughs> fruit cake olopus, olopus, created by the errant magic of the cook of the cooking time. Right, Megan's trying to do this completely sweet feast. <laughs> Like it's really crying. Bounding over the top of the ridge, two bull-sized, squarish creatures came bounding down, trampling and butting against the party. Stephanie threw a magic missile at one that seemed to do some damage, filling the air with the smell of brandy and cinnamon. As the warriors in the party hacked at the creature, they soon discovered that, while ferocious, they were little more than huge animated cakes or breads. Although the damage that they were doing did seem to affect them, they continued to rain blows upon these unusual entities in hopes of salvaging at least some of it for the town's lark. The party continued to rain blows and spells against the giant fruitcake monster. They butted and trampled the party members against in combat, with, but eventually they were hacked into unmoving bits of confectioner. Delicious as the party find. Wait, is it... You know what? Is this going to turn out it was all a dream and they've turned into cannibals? It was all a dream. <laughs> Word of magazine. <laughs> you know the thing is, the guy that does this play isn't going to get that reference. He's no. too old. <laughs> going to be down with the kids. <laughs> they spent a while picking up and cutting off... <laughs> Something from the off. 90s. <laughs> 
They spent a while picking up and cutting off the larger pieces and tending to their few injured when suddenly from within the cave they heard a terrible bellow and a great trampling of many feet, readying themselves for the worst. Their fears were soon realised when a creature of oblate spheroid shape Oblate? Oblate? Is that not, what is that? Oblate? Oblate. Yeah, it's yeah. spheroid. So it's spheroid big shape. Yeah, so it's big okay, right. thing. You smell <laughs> strong. <laughs> no, not me. <laughs> Smelling strongly of brandy and fruit. You. <laughs> <laughs> no, I smell of tonic wine, okay? <laughs> With a flaming crown of holly on its head, came stomping forth. Obred and Logan took cover, while Carolyn and Grendel charged at the deadly pudding. Petra, Jean and Braun fanned out to its sides, while Etho hov- hovered upwards and readied his wand of frost. Bran prepared to summon a flame strike from his ring of spells stor- storing. Like, like Megan's a great clan, okay? I'm doing really good. Yeah, Shush. you're not you're not doing too bad. The redoubtable fighters charged in and hacked at it. Using his boots of striding and springing, Kane leaped over the creature, avoiding all the heat of its blue flame, and struck at its rear, doing some damage. While Carolyn and Grindel closed and struck at it, the creature dripped burning brandy onto them, doing some hurt. Etho rained down ice while Alindra peppered the thing with magic missile. The beast then breathed a gout of fire, burning Carolyn, Jane, Grendel and Braun with a wave of blue-white flame. Knowing they could ill stand such a fiery blast again, the company knew they had to bring the creature down in the next moment or face worse hurt. So setting their weapons against it at second and a third time, they prepared for another assault. But Cain took to the beast himself, driving his dagger into its back, causing it to fall with a thud that shook every Carolyn explored the cave, the creature, but found nothing there. As with the fruitcake monsters, they carved up large sections of the deadly pudding and brought them back to the village. They asked to see the unholy book and were greeted by the village priest. Although his beliefs were strange to them, he was not unkind and offered his insight on the nature of the volume, detecting strong chaos magic but no evil on Carolyn flipped through it, as near as she could tell. The book itself seemed to be some kind of trap an enticement to readers to actually read the spells within and cause mischief by doing so, offering to remove the book and its baleful influence from the village. The party then set out on the third leg of their journey to find the wayward village tree. With some difficulty, Logan searched the ground, found its footprints among the loam and soil leading deep into the forest. The party found the end of the track many miles away and could hear a nearby stream, but over that, a soft, sonorous weeping. Jaden went down an embankment towards the edge of a broad, deep creek and saw an ant wife leaning against a tall, thin tree. Where's my ant wife, He spoke to her in her own tongue and asked her why she wept. No one will awaken. I've called after them, but no one will hear me. I woke up to a tulma in the midst of the halls of men and fled their blades in their anger, but I am alone. Jaden considered the ant's wife's dilemma. We could help you back to our own world, where there might be others of your kind, or if you wish to stay here and return to sleep. I could do that. The ancient forest woman regarded the druid with her infinitely deep eyes. A smile touched her pale face. I will go with you back to the place of men. I trust you. I do not know if I will remain awake or asleep forever after. The sons of Adam and daughters of Eve are quick and noisy, but perhaps not unkind. Beach Lim, as she called herself, walked gracefully despite her size, alongside the druid as they mounted the bank and accompanied the party back to the little village. There she took counsel with the priest, who was already greatly impressed by the company and the help they had rendered. The priest then addressed the company in the village who were making merry already, having received huge amounts of the deadly pudding's remains, as well as the fruit cakes, and said that Beach Slim would abide with them. Petra said that the ant wife's presence in the village would be a great boon and blessing. The company attended a holy mass with the rest of the village in the local church. It was at once alien and yet familiar, and serene hymns were sung. Wine was passed from attendee to attendee, and plain bread was eaten. Finally, before departing, Petra gave a gift of 200 gold pieces to the head man of the village, Og, who loudly proclaimed that it must truly be a gift from the hairy, ugly leprechaun. Thus, the company returned to the old phoenix and found themselves in a warm company with Bob, Vicka, and Lorne. On the next morning, St. Claus had, as good as his word, left gifts for each of the company members. Each, even Braun, received a special loonstone. Another Christmas save. The party left the old phoenix 
knowing that there would be yet more Yuletide adventures in the future. Final note, due to time, distant finances, I can hardly afford to buy gifts for every one of my players. For the majority of them, they're more than just people I play D&D with but friends, and have known them for many years. So every year I try to create some fun and quirky and in the spirit of the holiday and give them unique in-game gifts to give their characters just small advantage without going full Monty Hall. Maybe someday we'll get to sit down at a table together face to face, but for right now, in the spirit of the season, this is what we have. Oh, that's really oh, nice. That's cute. No, that, that, that's really sweet. I was not expecting something sweet. Neither was I. Especially going into this, I was expecting a lot. I was like, hmm, hold up here, guys. I didn't do too bad. <laughs> All right, yeah, there you go. That's, that's With a Christmas no miracle. It is a Christmas <laughs> miracle. Yeah, Christmas miracle, even though what day we're recording this on? The 28th. 28th. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to. I think I'm going to be. I'll try and upload this on the. Well, look, it's before. Look, as long as I get this up before New Year's, I mean, it's still Christmas. It's still right? like holiday season it's kinda isn't guys isn't it so yeah um, I've, I've met I've met new grog nerd friends on the internet yeah Megan you jelly you jelly with my internet friends well he invited us to play a game with him but I told him we're too busy at the minute because we got lots of stuff going on but I want to play with because I want to play with the grog nerd good for Jim <laughs> like, okay guys and honestly um, that's nice <laughs> that's nice dear that's nice. Uh, oh here um, I was going to tell this story earlier in the video so they were fighting this goose one of the earliest memories both me and Megan have uh, we both have this very vivid memory of so there was there's, there's a duck pond near where we live right mm-hmm. and uh, Megan with, went with her granda and one of her first memories I was about four yeah must have been between the ages of three and four and it is one of my very first memories of going to the duck pond with my granda and there was a big goose and it came running towards me and my toxic trait from a very young age is thinking that I am a Disney princess and I can talk to animals and animals love me all animals love me and so here's me three years three four years old running over to the goose trying to pet it and give it a hug put my hand out and it bit me and big, it, big nasty bite big nasty that. bite let a squeal out of me my, my granda who is the kindest <laughs> soul isn't he yeah, well, yeah. Was, well it was yeah was the kindest soul like kindest man you'll ever meet must have took a sprinting charge and <laughs> kept this goose the goose must have went about eight foot in the air yeah. and I remember that so vividly because I remember the honk whenever my granda kicked it <laughs> yeah um, honestly I remember going as a child and I got bitten my finger by a, I was feeding a bread but they, 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 honestly them ducks were vicious they are vicious they're, they, they were they're behind the fence <clears throat> now have you oh, noticed yeah they are behind the fence actually <laughs> uh, we took all so he, uh, he seemed to enjoy them but he hasn't been in a while we'll need to take him again yeah We'll yeah. need to take him in the springtime or yeah. the summer. It's absolutely freezing over here at the minute. And I yeah. know it's really cold east as well. Yeah. But Garbu says, get good. So it must not be that bad if that's what Garbu says. It's not like minus like 24 or something. <laughs> yeah, it's something insane. Like, <laughs> they're saying, don't go outside with bare skin. Yeah. I, uh, I watched a video on TikTok of a girl went outside. She lived on the east coast. She went outside with her wet hair yeah. and hung her head upside down. And she lifted her head and it was like frozen. I was like, why are you doing that? <laughs> <laughs> you're you're gonna get sick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, look, uh, this is our Christmas story. That is actually like great for Christmas. Hope you guys had a great Christmas. Uh, also, we've got a seal on. So if you're if you're if you're up for it, if you're the anything that we have that takes your fancy, go ahead check that out. Please. Also, um, we are giving away steel water for free, and also Victor gave us that um, bank hi- bank house video uh, bank house. Oh yeah, yeah. Thing for free. So like you know, even if you're not interested in videos or sorry models, we got, got other we've stuff. We've got other stuff. Go you know, so go ahead check that stuff out uh, anything else Megan? your Christmas money go have a oh look. yeah also check out uh, Dungeon Delver um, yes. next time below um, not make like, fun of your story like, we're, not no, funny they, no but they, never met you they, they, yeah but they get that though you know yeah. what I mean people should understand us by now we're not that we're not actually horrible human beings or are we until next time <laughs> tune in bye <laughs>